Welcome to EFT MBA Mastering Business Acumen with the help of EFT business experts. Learn the marketing, mindset, and skill set you need to create the EFT coaching practice of your dreams. Visit www.eftmba.com for more information. And now, here's the EFT training team that embodies the art and science of EFT. Alina Frank and Dr. Craig Weiner. Hello, and thank you for joining us. Wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Alina Frank, and I'm here joined by my husband by and partner. Dr. Craig Weiner. Hi, everybody. Hi. Great to be back. This is fun. It is fun. So we're <laughs> today the topic the topic of our show today is customer service. Customer service. I like to call and, it client service because most oh, EFT practitioners yeah. may not think of them as customers, right? That's that's for retail stores. So we're going to try to keep it to client service. But the jargon really throughout the business world is customer service. Yeah. So, right? you know, Which customer, are customer your students. service. Yeah, customer service loosely defined is the assistance that you provide as a company or service to those people or organizations who buy from you or are looking to buy from you because we really believe that customer service and customer engagement and being helpful and all of that is important even before anyone drops a nickel into your company or your service. Absolutely. And you know, it it's this is a this is a tough one, but we think that it's very important and helpful to look at your practice as a business because that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, it if ain't you no are hobby. accepting any funds, it's not a hobby, it's a business. And yes. we need to take the negative off that and we need to look at it through the idea of how we are being of service because you know the number one thing that we need to remember is that our clients are paying our salaries. Right, yeah. they're in charge. If they weren't there, we wouldn't have the same mission. We wouldn't have a business. We wouldn't be paying our bills. So we need to kind of get away from that discomfort uh, about that they're paying our bills and they're the boss. But they are, in a sense, right? They, we wouldn't exist in a practice without them. Yeah. So I, I, what we're going to be I, going. So, a, go ahead. Yeah. What I what I want to say about. We'll get into like you know how do you know you're you're not doing well? But I just wanted to to talk about the fact that um, this is something that I have really been striving for since I started my business ten years ago, even before that, because I was in the healing arts before that. So I would say I'm I've been in the healing arts for roughly about eighteen years, and um, and I have really really strived to be really good at 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 customer service and the way that I know that I'm really hitting the mark these days and we are as a company, you and I are, Craig, is that we get constant feedback. Wow, you guys are so great about communicating. Thank you for responding so quickly. I you know, and then in our in our workshop evaluations when we ask about how was your your pre pre conference or pre workshop communications, everyone gives us like five gold stars and says it was fantastic. I had all my needs met. Thank you again. Uh, it was it was beyond my expectations. And so we get that feedback that we're doing really well with customer service. But in the beginning. It was trying to figure this out. So this is why we decided to do the show, to help those of you that are kind of still questioning this or struggling with this and, and, and what to look for. Well said. Yeah? And okay. we'll talk about getting the feedback. Yeah. Um, I'd like to start going over a few points that on one hand are so obvious, mm -hmm. right, but on the other hand are so important. And, you know, one of the things when I was, when I was putting out um, – the show that really got me thinking was, I bet that if you asked almost every practitioner out there, how is your customer service, what do you think they'd say? Oh, it's great. It's great. <laughs> now, 
you as a purchaser or client, et cetera, has that been your experience that every person that you've ever worked with has been great? <laughs> Hardly. Hardly. I mean, so in there's overall, a problem. There's I, a problem yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, overall, I there's think. There's a problem I because. Think that, yeah, overall, I think that um, that part of part of what happens when you have shifted so much is that you experience overwhelmingly positive experiences with people out in the world. But does that mean that every single day, 24-7, 365 days a year, I've experienced great customer service? No. No, the, the, the really um, difference that I think that's important is everybody thinks they give great customer service, but as a client or a customer, we don't experience that. So somehow there is a disconnect between what people think that they're giving and what they what people perceive them as having given. Mm-hmm. So we want to start going through knowing that all of us probably can reach another level of increased service um, yeah. capacity and excellence and mastery. And yeah. so um, I want everybody, I just invite everybody to listen, like how do I take my level up another notch or two just from this call alone? Yeah, great. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Go for it. Um, number one, we're just going to start off with the, the ten major commandments of customer service. And number one is that I began with is that your client who's, is who pays your salary. This is EFT is a service business. You are here to serve others and to be there for them. And so that then is the first step will then assist us in the rest of them. While you may be having a vision for while you are doing EFT, while you are a practitioner to transform and change the world, the people that pay your salary, your clients, and we need to remember that. I think sometimes that's forgotten. Mm-hmm. So next, number two that we really need to remember, and you know, one only hopes that during EFT sessions people and practitioners are great listeners We also need to be great listeners outside of the session. When people first reach out and call us and ask us questions or have a consultation or speaking to us in public, whether they're a student or a client, we need to be good listeners, not just during our sessions, but all the time. Right? And what are we listening for? Listening isn't just with our ears. If they're in front of us, we're noting their tone of voice the words they're using, their body language, how they're telling you they feel, how they're responding to what you just told them. Um, So that mastery of deep listening Mm -hmm. is really, really crucial because, you know, in the marketing arena, people would say customers don't buy products or services. They buy the good feelings and the solutions to their problems. So right. how they're feeling as a result of the communication with them is really important and incredibly emotionally based. Right. Yeah? Has that been your experience, Alina? It totally has. And I think that um, that when you are, I, I mean, that's what people want. And, you know, you hear, it, you hear it all the time and you read it in reviews all the time. Per, the person didn't listen to what I was asking for. I mean, that's like the number one, if you look on on ratings where people are giving bad ratings to a service or a company, that's that's what they're that's essentially what they're saying. They're not hearing me. They're not listening you, to me. Can you give me an example of how that might show up? Like you, for example, do uh, consultations for people that um, are interested. They want to find out more about EFT or you yeah. or whether you're going to be a good fit. How might that kind of miscommunication or not listening be a problem in that? Okay. Yeah, so I I learn I try to learn from my mistakes and I try to share my mistakes with with our students and the people participating in the MBA and and here in the in the uh in the radio show. So I remember uh a while ago that I had this um what I used to, I, I used to, I don't know what it was about this particular day, but of course, um, I won't forget it. I've forgiven myself, and 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 I've taken the the gems from that experience. But I basically just went, you know, like like the 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 verbal equivalent of like spitting up all over all over someone. Like this is what I do, Blah! you know, <laughs> and and um and. They said thank you, um, I, and I will, you know, 
I will I will sit with it and, and I will tell you whether I want to move forward. And I got back a really scathing um, email saying, I feel like you didn't listen to me, you didn't ask questions, you um you you wanted to tell me how great you were and um and my and so um i feel a tremendous sense of disappointment so that was many years ago before i really started paying attention to all this but i learned from it so so that's a clear example mm, good and and we had i think we may have even done this on one of the other mba shows was mentioned uh, that I had been um, meeting with some different uh, referral sources in the psychotherapy community, in my community, and, and had um, made a lunch date with one of them to to get to know about what we sh- did. And within the hour lunch, I think that I had shared what I did for about 16 seconds of the hour. And what I learned was this person clearly was not an effective listener or attentive in a, in a dual way it was only one sided and clearly that established that that was not going to be a referral relationship that I was going to be making referrals to so that ability for sure. somebody to deeply listen and ask important questions is, is critical for a satisfying right. communication all right, all right. next, next. How, number 3 how do we make customers or our clients feel important and appreciated. On one hand, you know, we think of EFT tapping as always focusing on the negative, and, you know, that's kind of, I put that in quotes. But the question is, how do we make people feel appreciated? How do we make them feel, even in brief communications, whether it's in our consults or in our sessions, how do we make them, I want to say, with sincerity, they feel not just special, appreciated, like like they're the only one that's on our mind in the time that we're spending with them, right? Ways that we always are using their name, ways that we are honoring the work that they're doing, ways that we are expressing um, ways in which we see them stretching and doing their homework or whatever the different ways. How do they come away having felt seen, heard, unique all of those things and dare I say special in a in a small s way um sure. like what they're doing really matters and it's seen by us right right yeah so so um specific examples of this are when you answer an email address don't just say hi there say hi maria it's nice to hear from you and i look forward to connecting with you you know those Small things really help someone feel that they are important and appreciated. Yeah, okay. it is Number the four. things. Good. Number four, this I love. Help your clients understand your systems. What does that right? mean? Right? You can have the – what does that mean? You might have, for example, um, your client intake forms on your website – or perhaps you email them. You have a way in which you have them pay via PayPal. You have a way that you think is really incredibly organized that you've worked to develop that works well for you, right? Mm-hmm. But they don't know anything about it. And if mm-hmm. you don't give them very clear directions, as I expect, here are the forms. I will send them to you within the next 24 hours. Then yep. I need those forms back within 48 hours before our appointment time. Within 24 hours before the appointment, I'm going to send you a PayPal invoice, and I need that to be paid for the session to continue before the session starts. Whatever those things are for you that you have as part of your organizational system, you need to very clearly and concisely explain those to them because if your clients don't get that, they don't understand them, it's not clear, they're going to get confused, impatient, and even angry. So you need to take the time to explain how your systems work to somebody that has no clue about it, and you've got to look at it through their eyes, not yours. Absolutely. I was just sending. I was just sending a new client directions because they're. I, I see the vast majority of my clients either in my office in Seattle or um, by phone or Skype because I live on a small island in the Pacific Northwest. But there are people that that come here. They do intensives, or they they want to just feel like they're getting away and doing you know a whole healing experience by coming here. And so um, 
I decided when I moved here to this location um, that I really needed a PDF of directions on how to get here from the ferry because um, our neighborhood is so new that um, it wouldn't even show up on a GPS. And so I knew that people would be frustrated. So I even include a picture of our house on the PDF so that people aren't <laughs> driving around going, well, what, what the hell, I can't find the number. Or it's just step by step by step, very clearly laid out and including um, what to do if they can't find it. Here's my cell phone number and here's a picture of the house you're looking for. <laughs> Make it clear. Well, now I'm going to have to I'm going to have to skip the next one and go to the following one because that was a perfect example. And I'm going to go to the two ahead to jump to give more than expected. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You want to be helpful even when there's no profit in it. You want to elevate your level of service so that they feel like, oh my God, that was way more than I expected. So questions you might ask is, what can you give your clients that they can't? Get elsewhere. What is unique and special? Well, when you come here, you're going to be coming into a magical forest land filled with this. When you come here, these are the different transportation ways that you can get here. Um, here's not only direct. Here's not only the address, but directions and a picture to make it easier and where to park. So all of those things that you're basically you want the person to come away with that. Wow, that's really organized because what they're thinking is if they're this organized and methodical and careful with letting me know how to get to their office, they are bound to be that thorough and methodical and focused with the work that I'm going to be doing with them. And I just get a good feeling from the very beginning with that. Absolutely. Yeah, you're reminding me of of a guy that I used to know that was sort of like a general contractor for a house that I was renovating. And... um, he told he gave me the the names of um of people that could paint the interior of our house and he said and when you're saying goodbye to them walk them to their truck and look inside their truck and i said why would i do that and he said because if they can't even keep their truck clean how in the world do you expect them to be neat and tidy when painting your house wow <laughs> i love that <laughs> just like just like a dirty bathroom in a in a um in a restaurant doesn't give me a good, you know, warm feeling about what their kitchen is like when their kitchen is 10,000 times more difficult to clean than their bathroom. You, right? You know what? That makes it sound like everything is connected. Yeah. Kind of like in an EFT tapping session, like one thing leads to another and if they're methodical in this arena, I'm going to at least perceive the likelihood of them being methodical and efficient and effective in another. I'm making that leap. My brain is starting to make that leap and fill that in already. So the small things matter. Totally. But sometimes, and this is our next one, sometimes things go astray. Sometimes there's miscommunication. Sometimes, God forbid, we forgot to write down the appointment time correctly Ooh, and we made a ouch. mistake or ouch. we didn't communicate something clearly and all of a sudden we are now hitting that wall of fire we're hearing that resistance and we have an unhappy client yeah right i mean i i remember that happened once <laughs> it happens yeah. right let's admit it so what are the key steps for great excellent client service that we do when that happens Number one, you deal with the problem immediately. You don't you, push it away. Yeah. You don't hide from it. Yeah, and let me, let me, just, if let me apolog- just say something. Go ahead. I really yeah. want to say, I, I want to underline what you have said, and I also want everyone listening to know that it's really crucial to tap on what's coming up for you, or you will check out. Right. You will not be timely. You will not be clear in your communication with your client, and they will know it. Yes. <laughs> I will highlight that. They will know it. They will feel it. Customers know because you know when other people feel like they're sliding off from responsibility. So acknowledging, apologizing if it was your error. If it yeah. wasn't and there's a miscommunication that two people are saying it was at different times, 
own the possibility that you're responsible, even if you weren't, and make yep. arrangements. Yep. Clear communications, tapping, and communicating clearly early will swiftly. I just had one with somebody with a client, and I am just, you know, was working very diligently to keep consistent to hold the responsibility that I may have held in the situation and continue to be there from a heart space, not running from it, not hiding from it, and the situation began to turn because when we're dealing with our clients, we have to also remember that they are often in pain, in suffering, in emotional distress, and not always at their best, especially early on when they're working with us. So very often, what they heard may not have been what you said, and that's why clarity and communication, especially in writing, is so helpful to help reduce those, but they're still going to happen anyway. Yeah. Right? So yeah, I, I had... I, yeah. What happens when it does. Yeah, no, I, I'm remembering um, that last year there was a miscommunication with with a client, and um, and she came into my office, and this is in my office in Seattle, where... The door is opens up to a kind of a public space, and um, and and she came in and she was yelling at me. She was yelling at me, and 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 because I have worked so much on people yelling at me and not checking out, shutting down, I just said, hold on, hold on, come into my office, and I shut the door and I had her sit and I listened to her, and I let her go on and on and just express how. Um, how disappointed she was, how deeply hurt she was, that, and 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 I just said I totally get what you're saying, and I'm really sorry for any miscommunication on my part. Um, and and the, and we went on to have an amazing session. And the next day, I got a huge letter saying that I was the I you know that I that they she so appreciated that I did not shut down, that I listened to her that I valued what she had to say, that I told her that I would change I, I would change my um my my paperwork ahead of time for new clients to make it very, very clear about this certain thing that she was complaining about. And um and it was and, and we and she's been an amazing client ever since that. But I I can tell you that if I hadn't worked on my stuff years ago, because you know, I had mm-hmm. I was involved with people that yelled and that my defense mechanism was shutting down. I would have tried to deflect. I would have tried to make excuses. I would have said, you know, what are you crazy? Nobody's nobody has ever misinterpreted that piece of of those forms. You know, I I would have been defensive or I would have shut down. I would have cried later. I you know I would have done all these things, but I've worked on myself enough. So that's really really key is to work on yourself when you get that negative feedback before you respond. Very good. Thank you for that. So that's getting some tappable feedback from a client, right? Yes. <laughs> when they come in your door yelling at you, and hopefully not too many of our listeners have had that happen. Yeah. Um, but. It is really, really important. We become better practitioners. Our next item is getting feedback, right? That's how we improve. That's how we see that which we, that which we don't see, that which we're blind to. So how do, given that percentage that everybody thinks that they're doing great client customer service, and obviously not everybody is, then how do you get feedback from your clients? What are the different ways that you give them a safe way of delivering communication to what could be better or how you're meeting or not meeting their needs? So number one and the obvious way is asking. Yeah. Um, are there any ways in which the service that I'm providing, the, the sessions, not working so well for you? Are there ways in which I could improve them? Are there w- So asking in a safe way that they can give feedback for feedback. Number one. Number two, how do you how might you do that in writing? What are ways that you may offer periodically, whether it's one of your classes that you're giving, for example, when we do at the end of any training um, for EFT tapping trainings that we teach, there's always a feedback form that measures everything from were the teachings organized, was the room comfortable, did the you know were the amenities 
did those work for you? Did the timing work for you? How is our communication with you via email? So ways in which you get written, say, feedback from your clients or students is really important, I think. Yeah? Yeah. All right, let's let's quickly go through these, and then I I think um, I think that there's um, there's definitely more to be said about all of this. We're just giving you some real juicy tips that you can implement today. Um, so the next one is answer your phone, and if you don't ha- if you don't answer your phone, please get call forwarding or an answering service or a voicemail box. Please do that, and have a separate one dedicated to your business. It just feels unprofessional for you to, you know, have all your kids in the background saying, hi, you just reached the, you know, Frank family. Um, have it a dedicated line in some way. And lastly, don't make promises. Wait, 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 you... wait. Hold, yeah, hold, hold, on, hold on a minute. Yeah, I want to add yeah. something to that. Yeah. How quickly do you get back to your inquiries? Well, yeah, what I was going to say gonna, a good rule of thumb. Was, yeah, no, I was gonna. I was actually gonna go over that next, um, okay. with 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 like the very most important thing that you can do. Um, so and then and then lastly on this list is don't make promises unless you can keep them. So um, that is across the board. I hear people making false promises all the time, and that is only gonna smack you in the rear. That really is. Don't do it. Just stay away from it. As, as tempting as it is, stay away from it. People want someone who is authentic, a voice of authority, and yet sincere in what they what it is they're able to do, and know and and um, question and don't set up you know high expectations for impossible things. You know, just stay away from it. Um, so quickly here, because we only have a few minutes left. The number one most important thing that you can do to establish good customer service is to respond in a timely fashion. Respond and I I hear you. I get hundreds of emails a day. I know that. If I cannot attend to my inbox, then I'm going to assign a virtual assistant to do it or I'm going to have a dedicated email address just for my business inquiries. Those should be treated like gold. And I can't tell you how many times people have booked me either for a speaking engagement or an interview or an article series or they want me to be their EFT coach. Merely on the fact that I have a reputation of getting back to people on time. Did you hear that? People have booked me (laughs) as an EFT coach purely because I have gotten back to them in a timely manner. If your systems are bogging you down, then you've got to throw them out and start from scratch, revamp, and just do whatever it takes for you to respond in a timely fashion. Did I say that clearly enough, Craig? <laughs> I, I, I think you were very clear and concise on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Makes a huge difference. Okay. Let's see. What else did we want to um, – okay. So, you know, so yeah. many – go ahead. No, you go. Go ahead. Okay. So – Absolutely. Number one, number one, number one, underline, 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 exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Please know responding promptly is the ticket to having good customer service. Um, And then in all your email correspondence, as well as phone conversations that you have with people, answer questions clearly and concisely and always it always, always, when doing anything written, make sure you proofread what it is that you send. Proofread. There's no excuse. There's spell checker. Use it if you must. And make sure that you end and, and close professionally. You know, love doesn't cut it when you, when you are dealing with a, in a business. Um, make it professional. Regards. Sincerely. Thank you again. 
that sort of closing is really important to be professional. And um, so, you, you, I, I you know what, what that brings up? Yeah, I just wanted to kind of make a bigger picture because some people say, you know what, it doesn't really matter so much if I misspell. It's my tapping that is amazingly powerful. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. right? And no, it's like I, I'm a de- I'm a yeah I'm a deep listener. I'm incredibly effective. I get miracles with my tapping all the time. But what I will say, as as a more left brain person, is if I begin an email communication with somebody, and they don't even take the time to to spell check and the words, you know, they it's very clear that they sloppily you know wrote me back on an email or rushed and all those things I'm going to project true or not true, onto the potential session. Well, they can't even take the time to clearly write a sentence, and they can't even... So I know that that's not necessarily always true, and I know that, but i got to tell you, it leaves that residue of questioning. So take right. the extra time to it's look not at about, those it's small not about details. Your yeah. It's not about your intelligence, not about your ability to spell everything or be grammatically perfect, it has nothing to do with that. Right. It's just, again, it, it shows your level of professionalism that you took the time to make sure, as best you could, to just run a spell check. You know, that doesn't take very long, seconds. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So in summary, what would you like What would you like to end the show with? Alina? Yeah. Um, that it, it really saddens me that so many people um, are failing at their EFT business because they they could easily take care of some of the troubles that they have by paying attention to some of the things that we covered. So I hope that we've been of value to you. And um, we have we have a new series, a new EFT MBA program coming up, Craig. And uh, so if you sign up, yeah, so if you, if you go to EFT, M, uh, if you go to our EFT tapping training site and you sign up for our newsletter, you're going to get advanced notice of the call. We're doing a free call on, on what we believe is the number one reason EFT coaches fail in their businesses, and that will be next month. And then um, if you want to download and be considered for our EFT MBA six-month program, you can go to EFTMBA.com, and there you can submit your application, and we will give you a 30-minute um, free business review as part of your application, even if we decide that it's not a good match, your side or, or our side that it's not a good match. Um, so go ahead and do that. We'll be start. We'll be starting our new six-month series in April. And we will be back in a couple of weeks with another exciting show. Love to hear from you. We love to hear from our listeners. And uh, and so drop us an email or check. just go on our website and, and comment on one of the blogs, including uh, the, the blog that has this show on it. We'd love to hear from you. Great. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you at the next show. And don't forget, there are lots of one in the archives that you can go ahead and find at EFTTappingTraining.com and have just a fabulous, successful, thriving, happy day. And remember to keep on tapping. You have been listening to EFT MBA with Elena Frank and Dr. Craig Weiner. To get your free report on the five secrets to create a rockin' EFT practice and to learn more about the EFT MBA program, visit www.eftmba.com.